This golfer was an early adopter of the, or adapter, I guess, of the single plane swing and has always had a pretty good setup. You can see here that somehow over the off season he ended up with his hands a little too low. Uh, the swing plane should run up parallel to the bottom of the uh, trail arm. You can see quite a bit lower than that, almost down into a uh, double plane. Uh, that's going to screw things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and watch the takeaway, see if he's able to stay on the plane. Not bad right there. Let's come back a little bit though, let's back up. You can see he's taking the club pretty far to the inside right here, where the club is pointing way outside the target line. Uh, that's gonna cause some issues. And the reason he's doing that is because about in here, he starts to rotate his hands back. See that? How is that it's going back, he's rotating the hands. That's what's keeping the club inside the swing plane. Now he's in a pretty good position there. His hands are on the plane line. If he's able to pull the club straight down that plane line, he'll be fine. But what he has a tendency to do is because he came inside on the way back, he's going to go outside on the way forward. See how he's going over the top of the swing plane? And go a little high. He's going to pull up and out and not make the kind of contact he would really like to make. Plus, he's not facing the ball exactly at impact. Let's clear the line out of the way. You can see where the impact is. We blow this up right here you'll notice that the impact is well in on the house. Um, that's very unusual for a single plane swinger. Old habits die hard. We can see here with Dave, uh, he's gonna fall back to a habit he had uh, before, where he would have a tendency to reverse pivot or reverse shift his weight. And instead of moving on to the power line, which is the green line, he would stay back. Uh, let's go ahead and play this in slow motion. And all we're gonna look for is that mechanically, uh, his swing is acceptable, uh, but without the forward momentum, he's going to lose power and accuracy um, and hit the ball probably too high in the week. Let's watch this in slow motion. See a pretty decent takeaway. His head staying pretty still. Maybe a little movement off the ball, but that's okay. Uh, there's not a lot of up and down going on. Pretty good. Now watch what happens here. As he moves forward, he's going to fall backwards. See how far away he is now? Obviously, there hasn't been any weight shifted onto the front side because we're not getting any rotation of the hips through to the swing. Um, we've got to get him to move onto that lead side. Uh, the key to moving onto the lead side is to move the right knee over here towards the left knee and then get this right hip around up to uh, the lead hip. Uh, you hear a lot about not clearing out the lead hip. What that means, you're not making room for the front hip to get there. Um, and it narrows his swing down so that his triangle is pretty tight compared to where he was at setup, which was a pretty long, powerful triangle. You can see the width of the triangle there. We'll draw that in. Uh, we've got a nice shoulder tilt there. Got a line going down to the club here, a line going down to the club here. Uh, that's a pretty big triangle. You can see as it comes through the impact, it's gonna pull that triangle in. It's getting narrower and narrower. And now that's nowhere near where he was before. And that's simply because he has it rotated. There's nowhere else for his hands to go. So we've got to get Dave to rotate onto the lead side. Well, obviously, you can see I'm no artist. What we want the swing to do is create a uh, elliptical circle, uh, not a round circle, um, but an ellipse. Obviously, I, I, I wish it was you know, a little bit more smooth than that. But you get the idea how the swing goes around in this elliptical format here. What we're gonna see with her is that the swing doesn't get longer on either side. Uh, so let's play it in slow motion, eight speed. And look what happens. As she goes back, she's gonna pull the club in closer to her body. And she's all bound up in here, pulls in. So the arms didn't get away from her body. If you look here, see how tight she is? Uh, that's a lot closer to her body than she is at setup, which is here. So the hands also have to move in the same elliptical pattern. Let's clear all this out of the way. Let's just watch the swing again. I'm gonna go back part way and stop it. Right there, at this point right now, We'd like to see the back of the lead hand. That's his hand right there. I want to see the back of it. 
goes further back. We want that wrist to stay flat. Notice it's cupping, it's bowing. It's actually the back of the, of the uh, lead hand is pointing to the sky. That should, we should still be able to see the back of that hand. She should have also moved on to the lead side of the swing, which she hasn't done. Now on the way down, because she's all bound up here, brought the club in close, so we come in here, she's got her hands back to where they want to be, but now she's going to reverse that position here. Now she's got the other hand buckled, bent, and the trail hand now is down to the ground. We need to see the back of the trail hand. Notice if, if we just take a look right there in the circle, the toe of this club should be pointing straight up at this point. Uh, it isn't. So we just got some motion to do. Plus, we've got to get her learning how to move the lower body. The upper body's turned way more than the lower body. That's backwards. Our friend Denny here has been working a long time on creating an inside-out swing to produce a slight little draw instead of coming over the top and uh, taking deep, nasty divots. What we're going to see here is I'm going to stop this swing uh, about halfway down on the downswing uh, at about waist high. You're going to see almost a perfect or ideal club head position and relative to the hands. Let's watch the takeaway now. Maybe takes it a little too far to the inside. He's thinking inside. Ends up dead bang on the swing plane. Now as he starts down, watch, I'm going to stop right, oh, I went too far, back it up, back it up, take a look, right about here. Notice the club shaft and the trail arm are parallel. That's the key to the inside out swing. Now notice if we blow up his hands, that he hasn't had to bow his lead wrist, it's nice and flat, he's just maintained a nice hinge in his trail wrist. And look at the pressure against his trail pointer finger. That's the leverage point. Uh, the club shaft is parallel to the lead arm. The toe of the club is up uh, parallel with the front arm, the lead arm. The trail arm is set, nice hinge in it. Uh, he's got his elbow coming in forward. We're gonna watch as he comes down, it's still there. We got that beautiful little gap right here at impact that we can see through on through to a nice finish. Look at the rotation there of the hands and then right on through to the finish. Uh, he's going to get a nice shot out of that. Let's shrink this back down to normal size so we can go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, we'll clear everything out of the way. We'll play as good swing for him in slow motion. Beautiful ball flight. Nice little baby draw off into the sunset. Very nice. Take a look at Al's setup here. Uh, I'd like to see his shoulders being a little back, uh, uh, not so rounded. Uh, if you pull the arms back a little bit, he'll be in a little more comfortable position and he'll be able to move a little freer. Other than that, he's got a pretty good setup. Just looks a little jammed in there. Um, we'd like to get him a feeling of being a little more athletic, a little more bold in his setup. Let's go ahead and watch the backswing in slow motion. We'll go to the top and stop. Pretty nice down the line. Back up again. This is what we call a two-plane swing, where the swing goes back on one line and then up on the other. Uh, the up part of the swing puts the shaft like this instead of on the green line, which is okay. Um, it was done a long time ago. It's been a very... Uh, integral part of the golf swing for years and years and years. We're all seeing more and more people swing over to a two-plane setup, but a one-plane swing. Now, if he can drop his hands straight down that white line and then cross the green line on the way down, he'll have a good swing. So let's go part way down. Come a little bit out. I'd like to see him staying down more. Uh, the downswing is just that. It's a downward motion, not an outward motion. Uh, the outward motion is created by the rotation of our body not by our hands going out and above the swing plane. So what he ends up having to do, how he's, how he's standing up and pulling up out of the shot there, to where he is there, and then as he moves into the shot, he pulls up and out. 
that's generally because we're releasing the club too early and not getting our hands past the ball before impact. So there's no room for the club head other than slamming the ground once we lift it up. Uh, so we're gonna work a little bit more on club lag, but a whole lot more on getting that formidable rotation of the lower body. Notice that his upper body's turned quite a bit and the hips haven't rotated at all. They still haven't. There they go a little bit, a little bit late. Here we have a pretty nice two-plane sweat up set up. Uh, beginner golfer, uh, doing a pretty good job. Uh, let's play this swing in slow motion. We'll stop periodically along the way to see what we see. First thing we're seeing is she's moving. And look how far back she's taking the club. She has a tendency to take the club way too far behind her. The hands are behind her now. She's rotated a lot, but not that much. Um, so she's lifting up and out of the swing. If we just back up a little bit. You can see that instead of the shoulders turning parallel to the swing plane line, she's got to lift the club back up to the swing plane line. Now she gets on the swing plane line really nicely. Uh, she's got a, she could use a little more hinge in the wrist, obviously, so the club shaft is pointing more towards the target. Now we're going to start her on the way down again at slow speed, right down the plane, nicely moved, right on through, and then she pulls in a little bit here. I think that what that is is trying to control the golf club. You see a lot of amateurs do that. Instead of letting the club get, get away from them, let the club head get as far away from them as they can, which is what the momentum of the club should do, we pull it in and try to control it, and we end up with this little tight little finish like you see right here. Uh, compare that to where her hands, how far away from her body her hands were at the top of her backswing, you can see that she's pulled in. Now she's still got a pretty good spine tilt, she stayed in a pretty good posture. So we're going to ask her to try to let the club get a little longer on the way through impact. We have John here getting ready to hit a little tiny pitch shot, um, almost a chip, it's such a short shot. He's just trying to bump the ball up in the air a little ways and get it up to about 50 yards from where he is. He's got plenty of club for this. Uh, the key is to trust the club will do some work and to swing in a fluid rotational motion. Uh, let's watch this swing in slow motion. Taking the hands out away from his body. There's the first killer sign right there. Uh, the hands are so far above the swing plane now that he's going to come in too steep. Uh, so if we brought the hands back down on the swing plane that they were on, he'd be in a better position. His head is nice and quiet. He's maintained his spine angle, but the hands are betraying him right now. And he's going to get to the top and he's going to come down even higher. So now he's way out over the top, which is going to cause him coming in really steep to get that chunk shot. Uh, Targeting was good, but he still wants to make good contact. So we've got to keep the hands on the plane. Pete here is battling the issue uh, most golfers battle. Um, they're so afraid to hit the ball offline that they try to bunt the ball to the target. By that I mean they're not letting the toe of the club pass the heel of the club through the impact zone, uh, which is a bunt. If you saw it in baseball, that's a soft shot down the first base line. So let's go ahead and play this bunt in slow motion and I'll stop where I'm going to show you where the bunt took place. So here we go, we've got a pretty decent takeaway. Notice the hands are rolling over. We see the watch facing us completely here. Starting down, pretty nice, pretty good move. Watch is facing us again. Watch is still facing us now. So at about this point now, we can see that the chances of getting that toe rotating over is gonna be pretty small, so we're gonna advance. You see it never does rotate over. It's still bunting. It's still bunting. It's finally rolling over a little bit, but that's only because he turned. Uh, if his watch was on the other hand, we would not be seeing the face of the watch. The position he's in here needs to mirror the position he's in here. So we need to see the back. We see the back of the front hand here. We need to see the back of the trail hand here. And we don't. So he does, he scoops and then rolls it. He's... Now, in order to do that, we have to have a straight lead arm. The elbow has to be down and against our body. You can see that it's not. See, there's quite a gap in there. 
uh, the elbows need to stay together. So their proximity should still be in this triangle. And you see he's not anymore. Arms are pulled apart. And then continue on through the rotation. He rolls the hands, but it's not the hands that need to roll. It's from the arm. The left arm has to rotate from the left arm shoulder socket, the ball joint of the arm, right? Rotator. I would like to see a little bit more tilt, even on a chip shot like this. Her target is the red line. If I clear that red line out of the way, you'll see a little flag there. That's where she's going. Uh, she's got a pretty good setup, except for I'd like to see a little hip tilt like that so that her, her spine's built, bent a little further forward. What we're going to see here is why it's so important on our chip shots that distance is the key, not direction. Uh, we're going to play this in very slow motion. You're going to see pretty good technique here. And this is a beginner, by the way. It's staying pretty still. Look at the shoulder rotation. Very nice. Club is staying on the target line. Makes good impact. Ball goes up in the air, lands, and rolls. And if the ball came to rest on right here, that'd be pretty good. But it keeps going and going. So she ends up eight, eight to ten feet past the hole. Uh, it's not easy, but she did a really good job. Here we have one of our single plane setup printers. Uh, a single plane setup simply means that the shaft and the trail arm are on the same plane line. You can see that he's done that really well. I'd like to see his, his uh, trail foot a little closer to the alignment rod. Uh, so his body's aimed a little too far to the right, uh, quite a bit actually. Um, and we don't need to do that. Uh, he's doing that because he wants to hit it harder. Uh, and he's seen a couple of his body, buddies do that too, but to me you don't need to do this. Uh, stay on your target line and then swing as easy as you possibly can in order to achieve uh, the distance. Uh, Mo Norman once famously said that distance is a matter of the club you choose, not the swing you make. Let's watch this in eighth speed. Pretty good takeaway, a little lifting of the head. He's on the plane, a little flat, not bad. But then he comes over the top and dives the head down and ends up sweeping across. You see how he's sweeping way across? That club is not going down the target line. Believe it or not, when we swing too far to the left, we hit it too far to the right. You can see that ball going off to the right. We, in, in conventional golf, we have a rotational swing. In natural golf or in the single plane golf, we want that swing to head to the target. I was a little late snapping the shutter here, uh, but what you're gonna see is an impact position that is ideal. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and play this in very slow motion and just let it go back. Notice how quiet her head is. No hand action. We're gonna come into the impact position and it's just about there and stop. You can see that she's got no cupping at all in her wrist. Her lead wrist is firm and flat. Her eyes are dead on the golf ball. We're gonna move it forward just a little bit now. Head is still right there. No collapsing of the lead wrist whatsoever. Right on through to a finish. And then, she looks. So she looks well after impact. Very nicely done. See the ball is up in the air nice. Now she's using a little two-sided chipper, which is kind of like a putter, and uh, she's chipping really well with it. Uh, brand new golfer, I think this is her first time chipping. First time with that chipper, I know. Um, very good job. Uh, I like the triangle. And again, we're gonna take it back to the impact zone. We'll put the triangle in. Good, nice blue, so it matches kind of. There's the triangle. Now you'll see that even though the shoulders, maybe, yep, they're rocking exactly the same. The triangle has just moved until right about there. And on the way back, it's just the triangle moving. That's the key to the good chip and a good putt. Move the triangle, keep the head still. Here we have a really good uh, setup for a chip shot. He's uh, chipping with a seven iron. He's gonna try to hit the ball about 60 feet, uh, about a, a fifth of that in the air. So he's just gonna roll the ball up onto the green, float up on the green. 
I'll let it roll to the hole. Uh, again, we're going to take a the triangle. Maybe the left arm could be a little straighter. Uh, but his hands are directly over the ball. Uh, so it's truly a seven iron. If his hands were forward more, that would be a six iron. If they were back more, it would be an eight iron. The same club. So if you're hitting a seven iron and you expect it uh, to roll about a fifth of the way, then you need to make sure it's set up as a seven iron. Uh, what we're going to watch for here simply is the motion of the hand through the hitting zone. And I'm going to move it to about here where you're going to see the impact. Uh, what we're going to see is a tremendous breakdown of the left wrist. Now it's starting out already kind of broken down. So let's play this in slow motion and I'll try to stop it when the breakdown takes place. Uh, you can see the hands are staying pretty good there. Now he's got the left wrist nice and flat. He's going to come in right there and there's the breakdown. You can see that he's really flipping that club and more and more. Uh, what we want to do is keep that left wrist straight so the club is maintaining the loft it was created with instead of adding loft. Uh, we hit the ball too high, sometimes we hit it on the blade, uh, sometimes we top it, sometimes we chunk it if our hands are overly active. So we want to get the hands out of the equation so that at this point right now that club shaft is going down this arm, not the other arm. 